unpopular opinion. I think Ferraris are not that good looking. <laughs> sure, they're beautiful, but as a personal preference, it never really captured my heart. And until the Roma, which I thought was really good looking because it doesn't look like a Ferrari. But this one over here, this car over here, I think is gorgeous. This is the all new 296 GTB. And oh my god, look at that. My first glance at it, I was reminded of a Ford GT. And the proportions just look perfect for me. And, and those slick, flowy lines and this color. Oh man, it's just beautiful. Let's do a quick walk around and uh, to check out this car because there is a lot that is new in this car and exciting over here. And uh, this may be the Ferrari that I would, I would want to commit to to work towards one day, you know? This is the 296 GTB, right? 29 actually meant 2.9 cc because it's, the, it's 3 liters, right? 2.9 liters, right? 6 being 6 cylinders. Yes, you heard it right. Um, it's a V6. V6 was never road legal uh, engines for Ferraris. Uh, well, the Dino is, but Dino wasn't under the Ferrari, but you know, it was never under the Ferrari batch. It was the first time ever putting a V6 into this car over here. And it's not just any regular V6. Uh, we'll talk more about that later on. So GTB stands for Gran Turismo Berlinetta, all right? Gran Turismo Berlinetta means coupe, all right? So I want to bring your attention to what I think is... There's so many beautiful angles of this car, but I love, 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 love this thing over here. I mean, come on, look at that. You have this curvature of the glass going up and down like that. Oh my God. And that's where it's housing the engine, right? Let me see if I can uh, open up the bay to show you more of the engine okay so put the latch over here all right and then you reveal the power plant this is the all new v6 now this angle of the v6 is 120 degrees so it's really really it's really flat it's getting closer and closer to a boxer right that's really really white now it's now you have to pay attention, I have to sort of zoom in, in here to sort of get you there. But it really surprises me. It's actually really low. Now the top here is of course the exhaust and, and stuff like that. And they protected it with um, you know, um, um, heat shields and stuff like that. But right underneath this thing is the engine. Now if you look at those, you can see right there at the corner, uh, the, the little brown thing on the left and right, those are the turbo chargers. Yes, it's a twin turbo, right? Uh, mono scroll and that's just the turbo which is sitting on top of the cylinders right so it's a hot V right so to give you an idea why I want to show you that turbo is because if the turbo is there guess how low is the engine it's really it's way down over there okay so that makes the center of gravity of this car at a very advantageous level and you know Porsches is always have the advantage of being no low center of gravity with the boxer engine, but this brings it really, really, really close. And I do like smaller engines. I do like a uh, more you no know, compact, tight architecture of the car. So this one really strikes me to be wow. It, it's you know if you just compare it to like the SM90 Stradale, this feels shoved so much into the car, right? So uh, you have the engine bay. And then you have the electric motor, uh, which is right between the engine and the driver. That's the electric motor. So, combined output of this car, believe it or not, 830 horsepowers. 
That is, that is a lot. <laughs> I mean, not by a, forget about V6 standard. That's, that's a lot of power over there. But this V6, the hybrid, 868, 830, all of it driven to the rear wheel. So unlike the SM90 Stradale, you have the um, two motors, right? You have the one at the rear, and then you have two in the front to power the front wheels. This is all rear, so it's more natural in its driving style over here. Yeah. That's, that's a lot of power. <laughs> now, what I love about Ferraris, as uh, Bobby will point out, is that Ferraris, I mean, if you produce cars of this power, you need aerodynamics to keep the car planted. Okay, that's kind of like when you, that's kind of like the essential. You need it to drive to push this kind of power around over here. Now, what would be lazy is to build big wings and and cut holes here and there. But Ferraris are a piece of art, right? And I feel more so in the two nine six GTB. Okay, um, it's where engineering and art meets. Okay, so. They want to produce downforce, they need to produce drag in certain areas, but they want to make it look you know, nice and clean. That's why I dig about this design over here. So the first you have this T down over here, right? Can you see that little T over here? Right? The T. So that's uh the first one. It goes down and it goes flat underneath the car. So the car underneath there is completely flat, right? For the air. Alright? Now here you have two little holes to produce drag, right? So here you have one. And then you have another one. Let me see. Uh, right over here. Okay. It goes to the wheel arches. This is produced drag. And this one down here, the lip is produced downforce. This is really important. Now, a lot of people say that mid-engine cars are, you know, that has the mechanical advantage of driving. That is true. But what comes at the cost of a mid-engine car is that uh, the front is usually a little bit lighter. And that's how I feel about my boxer. When I'm driving fast, down the highway, the front can feel a little bit unstable. Okay, so you counter that with aerodynamics. Okay, so rather than making big holes here and there, like say, you know, the, the uh, DD3 RS and stuff, they use things like this to hide it, to produce that slickness in it. All right. Um, so the same, the lip goes down the side, and here is the uh, the air intake for the engine, all the air goes into here for the engine and the rear okay now the rear is really smart I love it oh before I go into the rear yeah this part as well this part as well creates aerodynamics and it does remind me a little bit of a spider isn't it like, like this top can you can actually remove it if it looks like it okay so now the rear is really smart over here now, first of all, you have an uh, air, uh, well, call it an air brake. So under hard braking, this thing, this black little thing here, will surface up to help you brake. Okay, that's super smart, and and it makes sense, right? It takes the load off the actual brakes and the rubbers, and you actually use the downforce or you use the aerodynamics to brake the car. That's super brilliant. That's going to help the car brake and take corners even faster. This is performance. This is like cutting edge performance technology on a road legal supercar, right? And then you have the and and the, the air brake doubles up at two things. It's also part of the cooling system for the engine. So the engine doesn't need additional um so this is for the air intake, right? For the to feed the engine oxygen. But you don't need additional air to cool the engine. Air ducts, you don't need additional air ducts. So what does it mean? It means that, now you can't see it over here, you have a more flat architecture on the bottom, which means you can cut through the wind even better. So this is, this is like killing like three or four birds in one stone. I mean, braking, cooling, right? Helping the architecture of the aerodynamics below the car. And on top of that, it looks sexy. I mean, <laughs> it's so cool, right? Uh, and also you have an active arrow over here, right, to help you produce more downforce when you're going at high speeds. Uh, I'm, I'm just, I feel of all the Ferraris that came out, I look at the 296 GTB, I thought, well, it's just another downsizing exercise due to 
regulations and stuff like that. Maybe selling car in certain countries with smaller CCs. But as I now understand this car more and more, um, I am I am well impressed. I'm so impressed by what they've done over here. So diffusers over here, all for aerodynamics. The exhaust is right up over here, and of course, it's part of also the aerodynamics design of the car. Oh, it is beautiful, this Prancing Pony. So, talking about beautiful, let's head into the uh, cabin and uh, take a look. So, no scissors doors and stuff. Simple opening like this. I love how they bring this forward from the Asset Nadi Stradale and the Roma. Okay. So, the cabin is pretty tight, as you expect from a two-door supercar, right? So, I'm just going to shut this. Okay, and you can see it's actually pretty comfortable. Now the seats over here, uh, they are carbon. Of course, you need that because you want to feel the car rotate as you're driving it hard and stuff like that. Okay, now I'm going to bring your attention to the cockpit and the design over here. The seats are kind of hard, but you know you expect this from a super sports car, right? But I'm feeling a little bit some. This is probably the pre-production car noise, but hey, you know I'm not complaining. Okay. Build quality is immensely nicer. I mean, it came such a far way from the F430, which um, you have the similar steering design that goes across all the Ferrari range right now. Um, they're all touch sensitive, right? So everything is by touch over here. This is what you control um, the traction of the car, okay? So you have blue here is actually we call wet mode so you need this when you're driving in the wet especially in malaysia you can easily send the car flying with turbocharged electric power the top will just kick the car everywhere this is what we call sports mode you should probably use this most of the time okay um and then you have over here race mode okay uh there's some very interesting technologies that's invented for this car over here regarding uh it's uh driving dynamics i'll talk about that later on and then we have ct off right that is like um very minimal traction control and this is when you are completely off you have to hold it for a little bit and it's esc off okay but most of the time you're going to be in sports all right um so we have here the different engine mode so h being hybrid mode and then uh, e drive this is completely pure battery you can drive probably for i believe 20 plus kilometers before it runs dry and then the engine kicks in and charge the battery Okay, and then we have over here, when you press this one over here, is performance mode. This is equivalent to sports mode for a lot of cars, right? And you go here, qualifying is minimum recharging. You're just dumping the battery and getting the most performance from your two engines over here, right? So, very familiar over here. We have the uh, signal buttons here all up over here, right? Very... Um, very slick and nice again one of my troubles with this is that this touch sensitive things you can get irritating if you might touch it by accident okay but you know everything is as normal you have the pedal shifter this one is equipped with a carbon fiber uh pedal shifters feels really nice over here and you get to choose all different modes over here check this out right all right you can choose even uh you know with the map of course you don't have the map here in malaysia right and a more track focus um developer mode wow <laughs> so this is like probably track work um over here this is optional like me you get to have your passenger to choose stuff like the uh, audio navigation be your co-pilot and stuff like that or you can just watch the performance by pressing this over here right so that's a pretty cool feature over there a lot of carbon fiber over here here uh, you have the selector to go into reverse Automatic manual, so this reminds me of the H gated manual from um, the older Ferraris. Yep, and this, my friends, is the key. They really up this game right now with this Ferrari. Love it, love it. And it sits right here and it looks like now part of the furniture. I believe this is a good return to Ferrari uh, with its design. Well, there's a lot of things that are exciting for this car. I mean, the engine is new, uh, six-cylinder and stuff like that. But uh, one of the things that really caught my eye and I'm really hoping to be able to one day test drive this car, and I've never been so excited to test drive a Ferrari before, 
is um, their new way of managing the driving dynamics. Okay, so I'm just gonna take a little bit of time to explain this, but it's pretty cool. Okay, so uh, there's something called the CDS dash. 6W. So it's basically a six-way uh, sensor to everything from the way it rocks back and forth, the yaw, the pitch, and everything. So um, there's a lot of things that it does, but basically this is new for um, in the automotive industry. It's a new thing even for Ferrari. Okay. So when you're driving hard, the car actually gathers all that data and it helps with the driving dynamics. Now where it helps a lot and what Ferrari claims that's helped a lot is in race mode, it's in its braking. See, when you're under hard braking, um, not all tyres are braking equally, even though you are going straight, right? Because sometimes uh, some brakes are warmer, some brakes are, are not as warm, and maybe the tyres have mild different, mildly different uh, contact points, the road may be different conditions. Basically, what I'm saying is that all four tyres may not brake like, efficiently. Um, now you have this uh, new technology also called ABS EVO. Now what it does is that when you are under hard braking, maybe you're turning while you're braking, you're trail braking and you're switching back and forth, uh, this allows the braking to be distributed evenly across the car. And what it means is that you can brake much later, you can do better trail braking. As Ferrari claims, you get more consistent braking performance. So the F8 Tributo doesn't have this technology. This is the first for Ferrari. Um, now with this system over here, the braking distance is reduced at a 200 to 0 braking distance, reduced by 8.8% and also improves the repeat braking efficiency from that speed at 24%. That is huge. For those of you who are racetrack drivers or you know if you drive on the track or you know something about racing, braking can set the difference between you being first, second, third, fourth, five. You know, it makes a big difference. Yeah. So this car is uh, for you. If you want to get it, it's, it's 1.228 million before tax customization and stuff like that. Um, it is a big sum of money, but you know what? If there is a Ferrari that I ever want to own right now, I mean, I did say it for the Roma, but this one a bit more because that's a front engine Ferrari but this is a mid engine Ferrari I, I really want this and it's something to strive for you know Bobby said something interesting which is if, if, if you are a car guy you have to own a Ferrari once in your life and this makes something that you want to strive for for me I, I speak for myself I want to strive for this car so if you enjoyed this content please help me hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more content like this in the future do check out all my contents on my uh, channel as well for any reviews, uh, for exclusive walk rounds, uh, driving vlogs, and stuff like that, right? With that, let me know in the comments below as well uh, what do you think about the uh, new 296 GTB, right? So uh, that's it. I'm gonna sign off and I'll uh, go this car a little bit more. So then, take care, guys. Thanks for watching. See you in another episode. And uh, peace out.